Hey guys, I'm Mr. Buildit, and this is the Mobile Grill and Chill Card. Let's go. The easiest way to accomplish this project is to have your grill and cooler already. So I picked up the cheapest, smallest portable grill I could find. That was like a single burner gas. And for the cooler, well, I've had this cooler for the last five years. So I thought I probably won't miss it. I got all my measurements, the minimum size that I would need this cooler grill cart to be, and then I kind of went from there. For lumber, I went with one by four boards that are eight feet long in a cedar. Now, I went with a cedar mostly because cedar has a tendency to age well and withstand the outside natural elements, kind of like any kind of fence would, uh, and last you a lot longer. I know cedar can get a little pricey, but if you find a board that's damaged on one side but not the other, you can usually ask for a discount at the checkout and usually they'll accommodate that for you. The general construction consists of corners that the rest of the panels would attach to. So starting with the base, I cut a bunch of the lumber into 16 inch long pieces and I pocket hold one of the boards and attached it with glue and pocket hole screws to the other board, creating these corner L brackets. Once I created my four at 16 inch long, I was ready to get started on the cooler part and attaching the panels to it. Once all the corners were assembled, I then started cutting up the panel pieces that would create the sides of the cooler. For the width, it was 17 and a quarter, and for the length, it came out to be 27 inches long. Before installing all the side panels, I found that going over all the edges with a 3 8 round over bit gave it a really nice clean look. Once it was ready, I then used a little bit of wood glue and some screws that were inch and a quarter long, and I started assembling each side panel at a time and really started watching this project come to life. Now based off of my cooler dimensions, the last and final panel was an inch and a half too long, so I just brought the entire project to my table saw and just trimmed it right off. Now for the bottom part of this cooler stand, I needed something that would not allow for water to pool up at the bottom in case something was spilled or leaked. So I decided to use four cleats or basically four of the one by four pieces, put some pocket holes in them, and then secured four of them for structural support with wood glue and pocket screws. This way it'll hold the cooler and if something ever does spill, it'll just go right through it. The finishing touch to the cooler part is the trim work that would be at the very top of it. As you can see, there's some end grain there, so a little bit of wood glue, a few inch and a half long pieces, and a few brad nails later, the section looks nice and framed out. When building the grill compartment, I built the exact same way as I built the cooler. Now, the only thing I did different here is I split it down the middle on my table saw to create the top and bottom part of it, kind of like how we learned to build jewelry boxes in wood shop. That way, when you close it, it's a perfect match to it. For the top, it needed basically a roof, if you will. So I cut up some pieces, added some pocket holes, a little bit of wood glue, and secured everything with pocket screws for structural support, but more than that, for clamping pressure. The base of the grill compartment needed to be able to hold the grill up. It needed to have a large opening for a grease cup dangling off. And on top of all of that, it needed to be light enough to prevent the car from tipping over. So the best solution is to add a one by four on both the left and right hand side of the compartment to accomplish all of our needs. To separate the grill from the cooler, I needed some kind of lift mechanism that would be tension loaded. So I found this hardware that's typically used on coffee tables that would accommodate exactly what I needed. I did a little dry fit, flipped them over, and then marked exactly where the hardware would attach. Now one problem is, in order for me to access the cooler better, I needed this part to also slide out a little bit. I marked exactly where the channels would run, cut it out using my skill saw and a little multi-tool. Then I went down to the hardware store and I found where the metal section is, this quarter inch C-channel. And I thought to myself that we could maybe fashion this in a way that would act like a slide after it lifted. So I trimmed it to size, drilled a hole from both the top and the bottom, slid it right into where the hardware would sit underneath the top, and then I secured it with four screws each. The wheels needed to have a little bit of tread on them, that way it can kind of go across rocks and all that stuff if needed be. So I picked up these universal seven inch tall lawnmower wheels from the lawnmower section. And for the hardware, I used four and a half inch long, half inch thick, uh, partially threaded bolts. Once it went through, I then put a washer on both sides of the wood and secured in place with a locking nut. This allowed for it to minimize any kind of friction and roll out just the way it needed to be. Now, instead of using all four wheels, I, for the front, used these little stops or kickstands, if you will. That way it allowed for me to turn this thing easier and have it propped up and balanced perfectly. To have a functioning grill cover that open and close, I use these black three inch hinges that worked perfectly. Now, to prevent this cover from tipping this entire cart over when it's open, I used a chain and I installed little D-links to it that have screw holes at the end of it. And when I found that perfect balance point where it wouldn't fall back too much and wouldn't go forward too much, smashing your hands, I secured it in place using a couple of screws. Now the nice thing is the exact area that it was set for, it doubled down as a little ledge or a little shelf. 
I took a sander to the entire project using 80 grit sandpaper, mostly to level things out flush as well as get rid of any wood glue squeeze out to get ready for the finishing. All right, boys and girls, to prepare the chest for the outside elements, we're gonna prepare it using the Japanese wood preserving technique called Shushugiba, and essentially we're gonna take our TS-8000 torch with a Birdzomatic propane gas. We're gonna set our dial, adjust our flame to be nice and controlled, and we're gonna start burning it, following the pattern as much as we can. If you wanna save yourself a little bit of money and go with a cheaper wood like a Douglas fir or a pine, you totally can. Just don't worry about scorching the wood all the way. Just give it a nice, cool, brown look. Uh, in the meantime, Let's get burning, let's go. So traditionally, there are two versions of the Susugi Ben technique. There is a brushed and a non-brushed version. We're doing the non-brushed version to give that more of the black concentrated look. And the applications behind it really, historically, they're showing signs of it decreasing decay and rot in wood, uh, stabilizes the wood movement, it decreases the insect infestation in the wood structure itself. Uh, and they're actually showing signs of it being more or improves fire retardancy, like which is kind of funny because we're actually using fire to burn this thing up. So historically, it's a very practical application and I knew that this grill would sit outside for an extended period of time. So I wanted to be ready for any types of the elements and what better way than doing the traditional way. After we have the project burnt and charred the way we want it to, we're gonna use boiled linseed oil and apply it with a cheap brush. It usually takes about five to six coats for it to stop soaking in all this oil to clog up all these pores that are expanded and let it dry overnight. The next day, when everything was dry, I gave it the old touch test to make sure that none of the charring could be found on the hands when touched. And as you can see, it passed with flying colors. I picked up some hardware that would lock the tops in place and some hand grips for the bottoms. Installed the wheels for its final time, did its final test dry fitting for the cooler and the grill, and I was ready to see how this puppy works. Thanks so much for watching this video. For branding the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button right over there. Tap that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every time a video comes out. Big thank you to our sponsors, Burns-O-Matic. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.